You might be familiar with this city. It's known for many things, such as windy, frigid mornings. But it's nothing a steamy, warm cup of coffee can't cure. There are over a hundred art galleries in Chicago. We would like to showcase a couple interesting artists and their galleries. My name is Nigel Remington. I'll be your guide for this journey. You're watching Vexit, the channel about people's passions, such as cars, food, and art. We will be exploring this iconic city, Chicago, and its art gallery scene. Hilton Contemporary specializes in modern and contemporary paintings, works on paper, mixed media and sculpture, with a special focus on photography, featuring internationally known artists from United States, Northern Europe, the Mediterranean region and the Middle East. You're looking at David Yarrow's artwork. He took up photography at an early age and as a 20-year-old found himself working as a photographer for the London Times. At Art Miami in December 2019, David's photograph, The Wolves of Wall Street, broke new records. One print, signed by Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese, featuring the real Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, sold for $200,000. The proceeds went to conservation NGOs supported by DiCaprio. David's use of composition creates a one-frame cinematic playground for your visual pleasure. When I say his use of tonality is prodigious, I believe even Ansel Adams might say, well done. The next gallery we'll be visiting has a warm contemporary feel, almost like a home. The gallerists are quite welcoming, but still professional. Victor Gallery exudes class with a wide assortment of sculptures, charcoal drawings and paintings. It just so happens today there will be filmmakers looking for a location to film part of their documentary. Victor will help them find a location in his gallery. Well, this is our corner spot. So we, we just started this in September. And these outside windows have brought so many people into the gallery just because of the exposure at night. We leave it lit up and it's really been a huge like push. We had a, a law firm around the corner that um, has been here for 30 years and they didn't know we were here until they saw this window. And they've, uh, they've just in the last couple of weeks, I've been in several times and seen us, but it's like, that kind of exposure is just mm -hmm. terrific for us. After you. So we've, we've set this up kind of like a home and the goal is actually to make this Victor home at some point when it becomes more permanent if that happens. Um, but for this month, we've pulled a lot of works out from our inventory. So all of the stuff that's laid around are uh, lower priced, more accessible works for the most part. That's a Spanish artist, Jesus Curia Perez. He lives in Madrid. It's also just a fabulous yeah, corner chair. with yeah. the whole corner behind you. And you still have like the, tra the uh, foot traffic, but there's also a bigger window, kind of a more of an expanse. So this could really work for yeah. family. Then you go for the coffee, it's great. What's that? The oh, you're welcome. Fantastic. Great. This is fantastic. Oh, that's that's one of my favorites yeah. in the whole space. Yeah, that's by uh, Christopher Gans. He's a professor at Purdue Fort Wayne, and he worked on that piece for years. I can imagine. Does he have more like that? I had, if you look behind the miniature rooms next door and we'll go back there, that's all his work behind the wall. And then these are some of, he teaches printmaking and drawing at Purdue. So these are some of his prints and then some of his uh, sketches. 
when he does people, which he usually does, not in this piece. Uh -huh. It's always only himself. He uses <laughs> himself as his only model. And sometimes in multiple personas. So he'll uh, cut his hair, or grow a mustache or a beard or whatever it is for the, for the piece. That's great. That's all charcoal on paper, but really worked over a long period of time. And this piece actually, he um, he completed it, and then I showed it in New York. I put it in an exhibition there, and while he was there, something bothered him about it. it like he worked on it for two years, and it was um, taken from an image that he didn't source himself, so he saw something in a book and that upset him. And so he wanted to change it enough so that it was really his creation. And he took it back and worked on it for another two years. <laughs> and then gave it back to me. And these changes are subtle, but they're there. And it just, it really did improve the piece without changing it at all. So it was kind of crazy. Like he's very obsessive about that, what he puts into the piece. The light source, if you look, it's three, images over over layering each other three or four there's um, the cathedral there's a forest and there's an oil refinery at night if we left now we would be shortchanging you because victor gallery has an abundance of eye candy art that will jump start your heart for example rick pass has the ability to capture subjects so superbly my raw primate instincts make me feel if though I may be in danger when I stand in front of his birds of prey. I quote Jesus Curia's sculptures arouse something more than purely aesthetic pleasure. We can analyse his work rationally and emphasise the quality of its textures and its patterners, the roundness of its shapes, the bold combination of materials, the play on space, movement or hieratic attitude. But in his case, the final result is infinitely superior to the sum of its parts. Jesus Curia achieves a special magnetism in his sculptures, a halo of mystery that attracts us and responds to the deepest vibrations of our soul. Pepper Quintero, art critic. Albert Vidal has been creating his paintings for over 20 years, based out of Spain, he has been painting landscapes from all over the world. You can see his passion when you look at his urban landscapes, his ability to manifest atmosphere on a two-dimensional plane leaves me awe-struck. The next gallery we will be visiting is located in the same building as Victor Gallery. ZG Gallery exhibits contemporary art by national, international and local emerging and mid-career artists working in all media including painting, sculpture and installations. It's located on Superior Saint Street. Jackie Tylston's work is oil, enamel and mixed media on linen has an Asian feel to it because she grew up as a third culture kid, lived in the Philippines, India, England and France before moving to the US. She has a BA from Yale University and an MFA from Indiana University. Her work has been featured in solo exhibitions in Chicago, Houston, Philadelphia and Dallas and group exhibitions at the Contemporary Arts Museum, Houston. Next, we'll be visiting Gallery Gouchard. They search all over the world for international artists, most of which are artists of colour. Ahmad J. Lee is a painter that likes to use pop culture as his mode of communication, a reflection of the time that he grew up in. His paintings are a harmonious tussle of conflict in balance. The palette he uses is bold and direct. His canvas is a maze that I enjoy getting lost in. Alberts is a skillful artist 
who uses the thin lines of a ballpoint pen to create bold works of art that display African-American themes such as homelessness, migrations, and struggles of average Americans. He creates emotional portraits through his unique style of carefully using line and space and parts of various individuals that he may experience in his life. Their stories are conveyed through a painting, drawing, or other mixed media. He works on a variety of surfaces, including unstretched canvas, paper, and wood, to displace his realistic and symbolic images inspired by the African roots of America. In 1976, Zola Lieberman Gallery moved to a converted loft space in a then desolate industrial neighborhood and founded the area that is now known as the River North Gallery District. Today, at their current location at 325 W. Huron Street, William continues to maintain the aesthetic quality of contemporary artwork that the history of the gallery had established since its opening by embracing a wide range of genres and artists. If you're a visual person and you're an artist, there's little special things that come along with being that, like when you're walking down the street and you see that little crack in the sidewalk and there's some moss growing in there and you look at it and say, yeah, that's really good. As opposed to the other people walking down the street who are doing this. <laughs> on their phones all day and they completely miss it. So this is a little bit about that concept of seeing something like a tree, and, or tree branches, and putting it in different visual context, where it sort of stands out in that environment. Unfortunately, we fell to get this gentleman's name. However, the artist's name is Glenn Wexler. David Lozano's portrayal of the speed bag is juxtaposition of masculinity to homosexuality. I will quote David. The speed bag's Cationes de Mi Padre series are inspired by my father, who was a professional boxing coach. It was both a vocation and an avocation. He practiced in his youth with his brothers as a form of self-defense. The allusion to violence is inherent to the object as it is used to train for fighting. However, the speed bag board is also intended to hang vertically, therefore making the function of the speed bag non-functional for training and perhaps erotic. This gesture references masculinity, queerness, as well as to the subversion of masculine tropes. You know, and rightly so, they don't know a lot about art. They just see little blurbs in magazines like Andy Warhol sold for $80 million. So they're going to buy a piece of art. And they say, gee, I'm really thinking about buying this. It's, you know, is this artist going to take off? And I would say, well, you know what? This piece is only $10,000. I have no idea if this artist is taking off. But that's not why you're buying it. You're buying it because it speaks to you. You like it. Uh, now, the artist might take off, that's swell, but if they don't, you know, you have this piece to enjoy. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to get it home and hang it in your environment and run home and stare at it every night. But you come home and it's around you, you're surrounded by it, so you feed on it in a spiritual and subliminal way all the time. And I can't explain that to you, you have to experience it yourself. Yeah, so that's another one of the beauties of art. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed our show. Please comment, like, and subscribe until next time.